What's up YouTube? This is Tube Digger. Um, so, this is kind of a beginner's guide to What's Tube up, Synth, but tube hopefully digger. there should be something in this um, live so, stream for everyone. So the plan is, is to, to open up Tube Synth, tube synth show you how to do that, show you how to get to the editor. Um, Some people mentioned that I forgot to so say this in my initial video about the standalone, synth, standalone plugins, that it's just like any other program. So you just press program edit. So we've got a shortcut for that now, which is press and hold menu on your MPC and press pad 14. And that takes you straight to program edit. So I'm not in tube synth at the moment. So let's go back to the main page. So yeah, it's kind of a beginner's guide to how you set it all up, but mostly I want to show you how to create some basic sounds that have got a lot of mileage where you can sort of, you know, take someone saying an echo. Is there an echo? So let's go back to the main page. I see Greg. Can you still hear there's an echo? Shortcut Mostly, I want to show you how to create some basic sound menu on your MPC that have got a lot of mileage where you can sort of, you know, take one second, chat. There's an echo. So, there's an echo. echo. Is there an echo? So, let's go back to the main page. I see. So, yeah, still here. There's an echo. Guide to how you set it all up. But mostly, I want to show you how to create some basic sound menu on your MPC that have got a lot of mileage where you can sort of, you know. So, chap, sorry, can you give me an idea if this echo is gone? And you can hear me now. You are echo darling today. Stop using echo effect. It's gone. Thank you, IC Green. Very helpful, man. Thank you for that. Um, so yeah, let's crack on. So yeah, it's a beginner's guide, but hopefully there's going to be something for everyone in this tutorial. So I've got a list of several sort of effects that we can make with Tube Synth. So let's just load an instance of Tube Synth up. So I'm on my main page here. I'm going to press my plugin for the track type. So we switch to the track type. Now it's automatically switched to tube synth, even though I'm in controller mode. In standalone mode, it would do that anyway, because obviously tube synth electric and baseline are your only plugins that you can use in standalone mode. And tube synth is the default, I believe. But I've actually set my preferences up to go to that in my software. If you want to know how to do that, I'll show you that. So you go to menu, go to your preferences, go to project defaults, and it's the bottom option, it says default plugin synth. And there you can choose any of your VSTs, any of these expansions, and just set that. And anytime you load up, it will load up that as your default plugin if you didn't already know. So let's close that. So now we've got tube synth. Now the next thing I omitted from my initial video on the standalone plugins is how to get to the editor. As I said, it's like any other program. Once you've loaded an instance of it into your plugin program, you just press program edit. The shortcut is menu and pad 14, and there's tube synth. So I'm going to take you few, few, uh, through a few things um, that many of you may well know about synthesis. It's going to be really basic stuff to begin with, but I'm doing this for complete beginners who've never even touched a synthesizer. I'm not going to assume that there aren't people watching this that really don't know the basics. But I'm going to go through it quite quickly. So your oscillators are your basic or main sound source in a synthesizer. We've got oscillator one and oscillator two, and they have what's known as octave dials here. And that's basically how you change the pitch so we can drop these and there, as you can see, if you hover over octave on oscillator two or oscillator one, it says eight feet or 16 feet or 32 feet. And that's the wavelength of these different pitches. Okay. It's slightly different for oscillator two. Let me show you oscillator one first. If we drop octave 
down. I'm gonna trigger this back. I'm gonna go to pad bank D. In fact, what I'm gonna do is initialize this patch. We're set to the default. If you look over here in the software, if I click on this and go down to init, that's how we initialize the patch. Now I'm not gonna click on that one. I'm actually gonna click on this one because this is my own one. I'll take you through this actually quickly. If we click on the init patch or patch, if we haven't got full level engaged, you can hear this pitch wobble here. If we do engage full level, then the tone is just constant. So I'm gonna disengage full level again, and I'll show you why it's doing that. If we just move along here, I'm gonna try and remember to do this in the software as well, uh, in the hardware, sorry. If we go to the LFO, now because that's a repeating modulation, my natural instinct is to go, well, it's an LFO. That's the only thing in this synth that can cause a repeating modulation, unless we had a filter that was a loopable filter, but we don't, we can't, uh, sorry, an envelope. We don't have a looping envelope. So I know it's an LFO. If I look down here, I can see that the destination for this LFO, which is a low frequency oscillator. So this is not a sound source as such. It's something that can modulate another function within the synthesizer. So, that's what's causing the pitch to wobble. And I can see that the depth is set to zero, but it's still occurring. And that's because over here, we've got these controller destinations and aftertouch is actually set to control the depth of LFO1. So that's why we're getting that. That is basically sending a signal to this knob at LFO1 and increasing it to, well, it says here 8%. So all we need to do is turn that down. So just if you wanted to create your own basic patch from scratch, that's how you do it. Just get rid of the aftertouch depth here for the LFO1 depth. You don't need to worry about the LFO. And then you've got a completely blank patch. And then, as you may well know, in the um, hardware, you can just save it from here. You can press the disk icon up there, choose your location and just save that as your initialized patch so you can use it next time. So let's go back to these oscillators. These are your raw sound sources for this machine. You've also got a, or this software synth, you've also got a sub oscillator down the bottom. So this operates, I think, an octave below oscillator one, or both of oscillators if you've got them synced. I'll talk about that in a minute. So at the moment, the sub oscillator, if we just take a look at the mixer here, um, that is set to 0%. If we introduce that, you can hear that is an octave below this. If we move this down to a longer or a longer waveform or wavelength or a lower pitch, 16 feet, then we really hear the sub come through. So I'm just gonna take that sub out of there again. Turn up oscillator one. Let's turn down oscillator two in the mixer here. Go back to oscillator one. So we're just hearing, hearing oscillator one now. Now I wanna show you a few things that are different from oscillator two with oscillator one. If we drop this down from 16 feet, you can hear at the very bottom, it actually sounds higher pitch, but that's because we're now in wide mode. So now we've got a massive range for the frequency or pitch of oscillator one. And you can go down into pretty much LFO territory because LFOs, if you don't already know, if you're a complete beginner, an LFO, like I said earlier, is not a sound source. It's just something that can modulate something else at a particular rate and it operates at a lot lower rate than your average oscillator, which is in the audio range. But yeah, you can drop the oscillator one down really low and really high if you go down to wide mode. Now the difference with that and oscillator, an oscillator two is that if you bring the octave down for oscillator two, let's turn down the mixer for oscillator one. Just change my page on the hardware if you guys want to look at the hardware as well. And 
Let's bring up the volume for oscillator two. If we drop this down all the way to the bottom, this goes into LFO mode. So it's pretty much exactly the same, but the range is a lot less. But you can get some really interesting effects with these two, especially if you have this in wide mode. Let's bring the pitch of that up. And you start introducing stuff like ring modulation. And then you can start modifying these waveforms. So these are the current shapes of these oscillators. And of course, all this can be modulated by the envelopes and LFOs and stuff. I'll get to that later. So what I'm going to do is get into this uh, list of patches that I've written up today of sort of classic or well-known sounds or simple sounds that you can create. And hopefully it will show you how all these different functions in tube synth work on their own and also with one another. So I'm just going to open up my notes here to see what I've got. So we've got um, a kick drum. So I'm going to make a kick drum now out of tube synth. So I'm going to go over here, I'm going to initialize the patch. So to do that, I might be incorrect in this, but the way I found to, that you have to do it is click on another patch and then go back to your initialized patch to reset it. So for a kick drum, I'm just going to use one oscillator. I'm going to use oscillator one. So I'm going to go over to the mixer here and I'm going to turn down uh, the volume for oscillator two. So this is just this oscillator we're hearing now. Now for a kick drum, it's a bass low frequency sound. It does have some high, high frequency content in it, but the main part of it is going to be low frequency. So if you can see these waveforms, they're quite high frequency. They've got quite a lot of high frequency harmonic content in them. But if we bring this down to a triangle wave, that's a lot of a, more of a darker sound. So the next thing is that I want to sort of take even more of the high frequencies out of that sound. So to do that, we would use a filter. In tube synth, it's a low pass filter. If you don't know much about filters, the cutoff is you're basically rolling off the high frequencies. So when I bring this down, you'll hear it get even more dull and muted. So I'm going to bring that down to quite a low value there so you can barely hear it. But if we look down here, we've got this envelope control here. This is basically going to tell this filter envelope. So an envelope is a shape pretty much that you can create using these four parameters here. So I'm going to increase that and then I'll take you over to the envelope and show you what that does. So without the envelope, it sounds like this. With it fully at 100%, sounds like this. And that's because now this filter envelope has taken control of it. So to give you an example of how that's gonna work, I can make essentially this cutoff value come up like this. Actually, let's bring this down again. I can essentially automate this with the filter envelope. So let's increase the envelope amount again. And now we need to take the attack to a slower amount. So this is at 8.79 seconds. And you can hear that open up really slowly. But for a kick drum, we want some high frequencies, which this is opening up over several seconds time. We want that to open up at the start of the sound. So it still sounds really flabby and flat at this point, and that's because we need to adjust the actual decay time of this filter. So if we just grab the sustain level, then the sound becomes more snappy and percussive. Same for the decay. So I'm gonna press my pad bank button and go into pad bank C, because I'm currently in D. 
so we get a lower pitch. And now I'm just going to adjust the amp envelope. So for the amp envelope, this also needs to be relatively short, but I'm going to increase the decay time. So the amp envelope is taking control of the volume of this sound. So if we bring all these down really short, we hardly hear the sound at all. But we want some kind of decay in this sound. Now I'm just going to go back to the filter here. This is saturation, so this is going to kind of distort the sound somewhat. Bring that up quite loud. And I'm going to go back to the filter envelope and just play around with these controls because there's sweet spots where you can really get this sounding like quite an authentic woody punchy kick drop kick drum There's definitely sweet spots and there's something I'm missing with one of the effects, I think. So yeah, this is one of the main things that causes the oscillators to sound more percussive in this example. So if we just look at the LFO page here and also in the hardware, we've got this independent modulation um, section here. So I incorrectly stated in my initial standalone plugins video that these LFOs and could be modulated by this down here. But it's because I was under pressure to get these videos out and I didn't fully have enough time to understand what it was. But this is actually a completely separate modulation source that you can just use. So we can drop down the uh, menu here to see what our sources are. So I want to keep it as the filter envelope so we're going to use this filter envelope to control something else now and that's going to be the pitch which again it's already set to so if I increase the depth of this we now get that really sharp pitch decay if I was to increase the decay amount on the filter envelope now, that now that's going to be a lot of a longer sound or more of a zap sound So I think that's probably too high at 100%. So if you play about with the pads with these settings or settings similar to this, you can get the pretty much the perfect kick drum, but you do need to keep pressing the pad back and adjusting all these parameters to get sweet spots. So if we now put this into a sequence, I don't know if you guys can hear that. Can you let me know if the sound and my voice are all at a good level? I'm trying to check my monitoring software here and it, yeah, it looks okay to me. As long as you guys can hear it and it's not distorted or anything. But anyway, there's a lot of mileage in this synth for percussive sounds. I mean, you've only got to start messing around with the oscillators and the filters as you go along. You can make all kinds of pretty decent bass sounds. Uh, thanks, John. Thanks, Pogotron. Good name. Um, cool. So that's just a kick drum there. So you're welcome to follow along this with this, guys, if you've got your NPCs in front of you. But I suggest you just watch this as we go along tonight and then go back once the video's like fully uploaded and finished because I'm probably rushing ahead for some people. So I'm going to move on to another sound now. That's a kick drum. So you can make pretty decent 
drum sounds out of it. That's not the best example, but um, I mean, it's. I swear to God, it sounded brilliant earlier when I was doing it in preparation for this. So the next sound we're gonna make is a sound effect. So this is gonna be like a sweep effect. So I'm gonna go over here and initialize the patch again. So I'm gonna click on default and then just go back to my user folder there. So we've got a blank slate to work from. So for this one, I'm gonna completely take oscillator one out of the um, out of this patch. We just wanna use the noise in oscillator two. So this brings me to the next thing here. The difference between oscillator one and oscillator two is that oscillator one goes from a triangle and you can sweep it all the way through to a saw and a square and a pulse. With oscillator two, you go from noise to a saw, to a square, to a pulse. So oscillator two doesn't have the triangle, but oscillator one doesn't have the noise. So that's the difference. So there's the noise. Now let's make a sweep effect. So for this, I'm gonna bring down the filter. So I want the high frequencies of this to slowly come in. So we've got like a riser or a sweep effect. So because this is just a pretty much a high frequency dominant sound, and this is a low frequency passing filter or a low pass filter, if we bring this down, it's gonna sound really muted. So as I showed you before, we can use this envelope control, put that up full. Now it sounds as if the filter isn't um, closed, but now we wanna increase the attack time. Now we want to go down to the amp envelope and increase the release time so the actual volume of it lasts longer and we've got a, a tail that sustains. But it's still going to cut off short because the filter envelope is closing really short because we've got the release time at a short value. So let's increase that to a similar length as the amp envelope. So not only this can be used as a sound effect for a sweep, I mean, it sounds like wind as well. So if we bring the envelope amount down, it's just gonna come in quite slowly. And you can create crashing waves. Anyway, let's create the sweep effect. So we've sorted the filter envelope. Um, we could also increase the attack time for the amplitude. So the actual volume of it comes in slowly as well as the filter. So the next thing that we can do with this is get the LFO to modulate the filter. So if we look at LFO one here, Now we want to keep the depth at zero and we want to choose the destination for this LFO. So as I said before, if you're new to synthesis, an LFO is like a modulating pulse that is sent to different areas in the synthesizer and can make it or give it movement. So these also have, sign, uh, these also have wave shapes that they operate on. So I'm going to just leave it at a sine wave and I'm gonna set the destination to the filter. So now not only is the envelope opening this filter, we can also get it to fluctuate by using that LFO. So we just need to open up the depth here. So that is now being modulated by the LFO at this current rate. We can increase the rate here. I'm gonna leave this at zero. And then I'm gonna go over here to the aftertouch. Now, if you're new to keyboards and MIDI and aftertouch itself, aftertouch is basically a pressure thing. So if you've got a MIDI keyboard 
and you've got it fully depressed, sometimes they have an actual thing where you can feel it and you press on the key as hard as you can and it's got this extra bit of pressure that the keyboard can register. So if we send that also to the LFO one depth, this is gonna control this amount now. So if we increase this to something like 100%, If I press my pad at full velocity, we're not going to hear it, but if I press my pad at something like 75% velocity, so what I'm doing there is I'm pressing the pad as hard as I can, but then gradually taking the pressure off of it to give the sound that fluttering effect at the end. And that's basically because of the aftertouch setting here. Okay, so for a sound like that, if we go and look at the effects now that we've got in Tube Synth, um, I really like these. Um, the reverb is just absolutely stunning, in my opinion. When you set it to, I'm not gonna use it on this patch, I'll get to that later. Um, but there's a setting in this reverb which is just beautiful. So let's turn on the delay here. Now this delay has got a really nice effect in it. You can actually increase the resonant frequency of the feedback tail. So you can adjust the frequency of it and you can actually ramp up the resonance to give it a peak. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much quite a nice, complex sounding sound effect, and it doesn't really take much to program that. We've just got, I'll go back over it. We've, excuse me, my dinner's repeating on me. Um, we've got a noise wave shape for oscillator two, and all I've done is bring my filter cutoff down to dampen the sound, but then I've increased the envelope to uh, the envelope control, so we're controlling it with the filter envelope. We've got a slow attack, so it creeps in. We've got a long release, so it fades away. We're also controlling the filter with an, a sine wave LFO to give it that fluttering. It's zero depth, but the aftertouch is allowing me to control how much of that depth of the LFO is sent. That's a pretty simple patch. I know to some people that have not really got into synthesis, synthesis before is probably intimidating, but in general terms, I. I can honestly say that is, you know, you, you can create some quite decent stuff out of this synth from the get-go and you don't have to do an awful lot of programming. Uh, I'm rambling now, so let's initialize this again. I'm sorry I'm not answering your questions on the chat, guys. I've just got it there for feedback, really. Um, I can't really do this and answer questions because otherwise we'll be here all night and I've got to get some sleep. So let's go to my user initialized patch. Um, I will look back on these this chat and see if there's any questions that I can answer. Um, so yeah, another really, but this is probably one of the most basic things you can achieve in a synthesizer like this. So we've got these two oscillators. Well, there's actually two really, really basic things you can do, um, which are, are effective and they take literally one control to move. So we've got two oscillators here. By default, they're both set to the same pitch. We can test that by bringing the level of oscillator one down and oscillator two. So they're both the same pitch. All we need to do to give this sound a real great bit of extra depth is detune by using this fine tune control. And we've instantly got a typical kind of hoover bass, trancey, whatever, stab kind of sound. And that's literally all I've done is just shifted that, you know, 24 cents plus 24 cents. And now we've got this really nice detune sound. We can introduce the filter, of course. 
this isn't a patch, I'm just showing you a quick example here. Um, another really great thing, I'll show you this in a patch in a minute, is this Oscillator 2 EQ. This thing's vicious, man. If you increase the gain on this, it screams because you can drive this kind of frequency here. It's like a parametric EQ, I would assume, because you can sweep through the frequency peak that it's affecting. So there you go. Um, so the Oscillator 2 EQ is decent and I'll show you that in action. But yeah, this was just to show you just by detuning one of the oscillators. It doesn't matter which one as long as they're kind of out of phase with each other. Um, I just want to show you something else to do with that. Now that we've detuned Oscillator 2, this is what the sync button does. This will synchronize the pitch of these oscillators. So even if this is out of sync here, but it does produce weird harmonics if you've not got it actually matched to the same pitch as the first oscillator. So they're in tune now, but you can now mess around with the harmonics by changing. And we're still using this oscillator 2 EQ here. Let's get rid of that. So you can hear that that's synced now, even if we muck about with the fine tuning. It sounds like it's phasing a bit, but it's still in tune because it's synced. Anyway, that was just a little sidestep about these controls. Um, as you can see, these are different as well with these oscillators. We've got detune, which applies to this quad. I'll show you that in effect in a minute in a patch and for oscillator 2 we've got micro detune so this is a really slight detune control i'm not too sure what its actual use is for maybe it's just a really super fine tuning to get sweet spots um, i've also really not messed about with the phase i assume this is the phase of the wave shape which means the point in the wave shape where it starts so i assume that would be useful maybe i'm going to test this I'm going to go to default again and initialize it. Let's take the volume down for the mixer uh, for oscillator one. I'm just going to test this. So this is, I think, offsetting the phase of this saw wave. What I was going to do is drop the octave of that down into this LFO rate here. So we can hear it's not starting on that click, which sounds like a kick drum. I'm wondering whether I can shift it to move to that. Yeah, you can. So if you want to create a kick drum out of this oscillator without doing any of that, I mean, it's not the best kick drum in the world, and it does repeat, but you have got a nice little percussive effect there if you drop oscillator 2 all the way down into LFO range, and then adjust the phase, I imagine that's shifted 256 degrees. I'm not very good with all that kind of stuff, but I imagine it's shifted it to here. And that's why we hear that sharp sound now. So let's do another patch. I'm really sorry if I go too fast with these things, guys, but um, that's just the way it is. I've got to kind of move it along. Um, and also consider that you guys are trying to follow along, but you can, as I said, you can go back. I'm rambling again, aren't I? So let's do a pad or a string sound. Now I found the uh, the tube synth, the tube synth, tube synth to be really good for this. So we've got my initialized patch. And the first thing I'm gonna do is change the, I'm going to keep the oscillator one as a sawtooth. Um, the first thing that you could do if you wanted to create a pad or a string is modify the amp envelope. So give it a smooth attack, so a slow attack and a long-ish release time. So that doesn't sound at all like 
a string, obviously. So let's increase the pitch. So I'm going to take oscillator two out of this. So this is where we can see how useful quad is. Quad basically thickens and quadruples the sound in a similar way to a chorus effect does. I'm, I don't know if I'm completely accurate with that, but let's just take a listen to it dry. And now let's listen to the quad. And that's literally all you need to do to sort of initially get Blade Runner-esque style uh, string or pad sounds. Now we can detune that to make it sound a little bit less natural. I quite like it down here where it's quite subtle. Okay, so that's a really simple patch there, but you can make this a lot more interesting if you look at this parameter here. It's filter envelope to shape. So if we increase this amount here now, we're essentially telling the filter envelope to take control of this wave shape. So we can get this wave shape to sweep through really slowly by increasing this attack amount here. We increase the release time as well so that's basically gonna it doesn't visually show it because it stays in the wave that you've currently got it set to but basically that envelope is going to do this and end up at the pulse and then just fade off again because we've got a long release time so that sounds quite unnatural but I did get uh, this basically because we're cha changing the wave shape, but I did get this to sound really like a really quite organic string sound the other day. Or yesterday, I think it was. Um, I'm sure there was another effect that I'm missing. Um, yeah, it was a modulation to the wave shape that was with an LFO. So it was a really subtle modulation. So if we look at LFO2 here, and LFO1 and LFO2 differ, you get less destinations to send the LFO2 and LFO1. You've got uh, off, pitch, filter, level, or pan. But in LFO2, you've got a lot more destinations. So I'm going to send that to the shape of oscillator 1. And I'm just going to give it a tiny bit of depth. I'll take the sync off. Yeah, it's a shame I can't get it to sound how I had it the other day or yesterday, um, it sounded really natural. I think I've actually got the patch saved somewhere. Uh, but this is the reverb. Um, if we just take a look at that, I can show you this really nice setting in here. So for this, I would set it to stadium because I want a really big sort of epic string kind of feel to it. But you can set the time to plus infinite seconds I assume that means. It's not a freezing drone kind of reverb like in Ableton Live you can freeze the reverb so it infinitely drones but it's pretty decent this but it does tail off a, a, a really long time but it, it is does sound pretty lush. So yeah, just adding that reverb to that really enhances that. I'll just try and open up 
the um, patch that I saved for this. So I'm going to go to my SD card. Um, SD card, programs, tube synth, pads, mellow string, I think it was. Yeah, this is a much better patch because it's got this nice little fluttering effect in it. So this is the next thing to mention in this. That last patch that I just built there live in front of you, it wasn't brilliant, um, but it was pretty much this patch, but this patch is done correctly. Um, I spent a bit more time on it earlier today. If we take out Oscillator 2 from the mixer, and if we slowly bring in Oscillator 2, you can hear that it's creating a chord. So we can create chords without actually using up any extra polyphony just by using this fine tune. So this fine tune is actually semitones. If you look, um, you can actually push this all the way up to plus 12 semitones. So that's one octave above what it is set here and likewise below. Um, so fine tune on both of these is actually, you know, semitones as well. Let me just undo that and get that back. So that's just another really basic trick there for beginners. If you want to create a chord, you just offset your pitch of your second oscillator and you can create a basic two note chord as well as the fine tuning and giving it that kind of sort of weird chorusy feel. So that's that. What other patch did I want to show you? Dirty bass. So this is where we can really see the power of this oscillator to EQ control. So I'm going to initialize this again. God, my mouth's dry. So badly dry. I'm just going to get a drink of water, guys. Two seconds. I'm parched. My mouth is dry as a nun's chuff. Whatever that is. One second, guys. Oh, live TV, eh? Who'd work with children, animals, or NPCs? So, uh, I've initialized this patch, and let's now see what we can do with some dirty bass. So I'm going to drop my two oscillators to something a bit lower. Now I'm not showing you the sub oscillator properly yet. I'll bring that into this patch. Again, we want to just detune this. So we've got a nice Hoover bass horn kind of sound. Um, I've also got an FM bass that I wanted to show you. So first of all, I'm going to bring the filter cut off down to make it sound a bit darker. Next thing I do or I can do is we've got a drive control up here in the output so we can drive the shape, I believe. I think that might be just squaring the signal off like saturation or distortion or something. I'm not too sure. So that's without the sub oscillator. Now it sounds good on my speakers, but it lacks a bottom end. So if we bring the sub oscillator in now, it gets proper angry. Now we can start mucking around with this oscillator too, uh, EQ. So like I said, I believe this is a parametric EQ. That's to say that if you increase the gain, it puts a spike at where this frequency dial is within the frequency spectrum of this sound. So if we put it fully up to 48 dB, you can hear that ringing in there. Because it's a low frequency sound, when you bring this down, it's going to accentuate the low frequencies more because there's more low frequency content in there. But we can start mucking about with this second oscillator now.
Now, again, we can return to this filter envelope control. Um, this oscillator 2 EQ, uh, like I say, it puts a spike in the frequency, but you can also get it to follow the pitch of your notes if you engage the key track. So this tracks the position of the key that you're pressing obviously and matches it to this frequency or vice versa. So you can get some really angry, angry bass sounds out of this. not even touched on changing these wave shapes yet so let's just see what they add to the party and of course we can modulate all these shapes with LFOs so let's go to LFO 2 choose the destination for oscillator 2 shape Let's actually put that LFO on the filter now. So yeah, you can get some really dirty, gritty sounds using this Oscillator 2 EQ. Um, I'm going to try another patch, guys, and show you an FM kind of plucky bass sound that I discovered that you could make in here. Let's go to my initialized patch again. Uh, I just want to say thanks for tuning in, guys. I appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Um, I had a bit of a strange day today and I almost didn't want to do this, um, but that wouldn't be fair to you because I said I was going to do it. So I'm doing it and everything's lovely in Tube Digger world. So this is like an FM kind of bass. Um, so this isn't an FM synthesizer, but you can kind of emulate some of that using something called ring modulation and also you can use the Oscillator 2 EQ to do that. So here's our basic sound. I'm going to set my Oscillator 1 octave to 16 feet. And I'm going to set this to a triangle wave. I'm going to set the Oscillator 2 to 20% pulse sync. Um, so that is around here and I'm going to set this to a higher four foot wave. I might increase that pitch of, of that oscillator in a bit. So again, let's go back to oscillator EQ, if we increase the gain. This is now going to start putting a spike in whichever frequency we select with this frequency dial. And we also want the key track to help us to this frequency to follow the pitch. And you've got somewhat of a kind of an FM plucky bass sound there. Now we haven't adjusted the amp envelope for this, so. volume a bit. So this is just a matter of playing about with this um, frequency of oscillator e EQ, uh, oscillator 2 EQ, sorry. But you get some really nice tones around sort of 4000 hertz, sort of crunchy stuff going on.
And I did have this sounding like bells the other day. Anyway, I've sort of gone on and on about this oscillator EQ. Have a uh, oscillator 2 EQ. Have a play about with that, guys. The frequency and the gain. Just ramp that gain up and sweep through the frequency uh, of oscillator 2, and it's great. And obviously, you can affect all different wave shapes in there. Again, we've got the F uh, filter envelope to shape for this waveform as well. So let's put that up to full and then give this a slow attack. So you can make all kinds of weird and wonderful odd bass sounds and vintage stuff with that. Um, I'm sure I had another example here for tube synth. Um, well, I've nearly been on an hour, guys. So the next, uh, I'm just going to be on here until 10 o'clock, I think. So if you guys have got any questions and uh, just put them down below and I'll try and answer them. I'm not going to do any more in this. They're the basic patches that I wanted to show you and it was really just to show you how all these controls interact with each other. Um, I'm just going to see if there's anything. So I didn't cover ring modulation. Let me just do that in the last uh, bit of this hour. So default that, go back to init. So ring modulation, I don't claim to know everything there is about synthesis by any means, but as far as I understand, ring modulation mixes these two oscillators and what, when you open up this, you hear the result of that. So it's not like this mixer. So I'm obviously missing something from that. I have, it's just, a, it emulates a circuit uh, which was found in old vintage synthesizers, but that's my really bad rough explanation of it. But let's just listen to how it sounds. So. If we take out the mixer for oscillator one and oscillator two and bring them ring mod up, we'll hear oscillator one and oscillator two. We can't hear it at the moment. Uh, yeah, good question, Pogo Tron. I'll get to the compressor. So I don't, I don't know if I'm going to use the compressor. I'll leave that up to you guys. But the compressor, it's really effective and it doesn't sound bad at all. Um, the best thing I found it for is if you've got something modulating like an LFO, it really helps to level things out so it doesn't get too wild and all over the place and gives it quite a nice compressed feel. I'll, I'll try and fit that in. Maybe I'll do it on this sound for the ring modulation. So that's the ring modulation up full. Let's take it out and bring both oscillators back in. And you can hear that this is a lot flatter we take those both out and bring the ring mod up again this almost sounds like it's got a bit of a vocoder buzz to it and now we can mess around with the pitches to give us different textures and timbres And you can drive that ring modulation as well. You can't drive it to Sainsbury's and get you shopping, but you can drive the sound of it. So yeah, it gives you this really kind of nice, sort of flangey, ringy, metallic kind of texture. But, you know, use it in conjunction with all the pitch controls and you get some really mad stuff. Especially if you have this in wide mode, like I said earlier, oscillator one um, can be put into wide pitch mode or wide frequency mode. So that works really well with ring modulation. If we take the ring modulation out, let's bring the oscillator one and two back in. Let's increase the ring modulation. And now mess about with this fine tuning 
for oscillator one. <laughs> You can get some really sort of quite crazy stuff. Mad basses, squelches. Let's use the filter envelope for the shape again. You can actually modulate the ring mod amount with, I believe, LFO2, yeah, ring level. So the destination to ring level and then increase the depth. And you can get some really nice ringy, sort of resonant harmonic bass sounds. So let's just take a look at the compressor um, Pogo Tron was asking about. I'm not sure if this is the best sound for it, but let's see. Let's engage the compressor. Now we've not adjusted anything. Let's uh, bring that threshold down. And also increase the ratio to, let's put it all the way up full. So that's really gonna be fully compressed now. And now let's adjust the output. Um, so that's it with the compressor and that's it without it. So it really squashes it quite a lot. But that's obviously going to work on loads of different things. So let's say, for example, I'm going to create a brand. No, actually, I'm going to load in one of my own patches to show you something else that I made just before we finish. Uh, programs, program, oh, that's not it. Um, tube synth, um, pads. Let's choose this one, Happy Ghosts, I call this. Now I'm going to increase the attack time, it's a really slow attack. And I'm just going to get rid of that really long. So I'm going to engage the arpeggiator. So main page, arp. Um, let's latch it. So let's slam this arpeggiated synth line now.
So I've got the uh, arpeggiator running. I'm just going to turn this down a bit. And what I've done is taken the filter cutoff down, down really low, and then I'm using a sample and hold, which is a random kind of wave shape. But it's a um, it's kind of like a stepped random wave shape, basically. And I've increased the depth to about 35%, and that's affecting the low pass filter. So even though the ARP is running at a constant, we literally the LFO is just kind of bringing this filter up at odd intervals. Uh, this is quite an interesting parameter, the fade. So we can fade in that LFO to modulation. And what's causing these kind of raindrop kind of sounds is this resonance, which is up really high. Anyway, that was a little extra little thing at the end there, just to show you what you can achieve with the arpeggiator as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this, guys. Um, I did kind of ramble on a little bit and went all over the ch all over the place, but I've managed to maintain an average of 30 <laughs> viewers throughout this thing. So I really appreciate you uh, tuning in, guys. Stay tuned for more MPC uh 2.3 videos i uh, hope this has been interesting for you and you've learned a few bits i'm sorry if i've skipped over bits and bobs a bit too quick but please do uh check back on the video once it's all fully sort of saved and uploaded which will be several minutes after i finish the stream tonight and you can obviously go back and s listen to me ramble on a little bit more so i will catch you on the next one guys this is tube digger thank you very much for tuning in peace out i'll catch you on the next one